This video is meant to be a supplement for the Houdini courses offered at Becker College and Lesley University. In this video, I would like to cover one additional shaping method we have for dispersing our fractures across the RBD material fracture node, and that is the input points. This requires a scatter node, basically. So what I'm going to do is place a scatter node in the scene. So I'll type in SC for scatter and add that. And I'm going to I'm going to set my scatter points down to one. So it's just going to actually let me make that two. I'm going to scatter two points. And then I have to hook the box into the scatter and then the scatter goes into this very last input on the RBD material fracture node called the extra Volnoi points for concrete or glass. Uh, that's important to know because what that means is that yeah, the using these extra points with the scatter node are only applicable to the concrete or the glass material type, not the wood. So actually I'm going to switch it to glass because I think that one is a little easier to see what's happening. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I have two scatter points and if I look at those points, uh, let me turn on my point display. We can see there's one in the upper corner and one in the lower corner. Here's one and here's one, but they're not affecting the, the actual fracture. And that's because uh, we're not telling the material fracture node to use these uh, by default. So right here is the input and it's grayed out. So right now it's, it's scattering this one point, which is just a random scatter. So I'm actually going to shut that off. So now I have no scatter points at all. And I'm going to tell the RBD material fracture node to use the input points coming from the scatter node instead. So I'll activate that, and now we can see there's one in the upper corner and one down here. Uh, now, as we discussed in class, we looked at using the transform node to modify these points. So if I put a transform node after the scatter, I can now transform these nodes. Or, I'm sorry, transform these, these points. So I could grab my scale tool and scale them in. And now we see that I have some control over where they are on the surface. So we use the transform node to transform all the points as a whole, but we can also transform the individual points. And I found the best way to do that is to actually not use a transform node, but here at the scatter level, I can select the individual points. And as I start to manipulate each individual point, Houdini will add an edit node in here for me. So I'm going to, I'm going to template the RBD material fracture so that I can see the entire object. And then I'm going to come up here and put my display flag on the scatter node and also make that my active node. So this is where it gets a little tricky. Uh, what we need to do is we need to come over here to our geometry select mode and tell it that we want to be at the point level. And then we need to turn our unlock off here. And if I grab my select tool, I should be able to choose the individual points. And it's allowing me to do that. Um, and what we found in class two is that sometimes it gets stuck and we can't manipulate them. So sometimes what you might have to do is just toggle back and forth between your select tool and your manipulator tool or your show handles tool. And it should activate itself at some point and then you can move them. So again, we want to make sure we're at the point level here, point, points level, select, the, the selection lock is off or the secure selection button is off and then we can use our regular manipulator tools and you can see I'm moving just the one point right to where I want it. So this really gives us great uh, art control over where the fractures occur and you can see now that Houdini has added an edit node. And then I can select the other point and with either my move tool or my show handles tool, I can move this into place. And so if I wanted to cluster these fractures right around the center and only have two, uh, this is the great way to do it. So now I have those two fracture points right there in the center. So that should do it for this lesson. This was the, um, the additional shaping tool that we went over in class uh, to augment what we had done the week before with the Volnoi fracture and the RBT material fracture. 
Uh, and again, that is using the input points coming in from a, a scatter node.